Let us talk about interface management during construction execution phase. Interface management in construction execution phase is simple. Especially if you've done the work or the folks who have done the work before you during the engineering design phase. If they have done their bulk of the work, then you know that you have a much simpler job to manage. The funny thing is, in my limited experience over the last 10 years, I have just seen the opposite. The engineering phase is not given at our attention. As a result, all those problems that uh, that may have that may cause a project to delay or cost increase ends up in construction's hands. And as a result, construction gets the interesting job of managing all those things and still meet the original cost and schedule targets. So, if you are in construction, you are in a good position. <laughs> Now let's start. So the first thing that you want to manage you know, when it, you are in a construction uh, phase uh, in terms of interface management, the first thing is again to start with the basics. The basic is what areas do you, should you focus and what area if you focus on those areas will give you the best uh, and the biggest uh, return for your investment of your time, energy and money. The first thing is that do you have any other project in your location? in your area where you are operating or you are constructing. You may have a project that's across the boundary. You may have a project if you're in an operating environment, uh, maybe across the road. So make sure that you know their schedule, you know uh, what uh, um, what are the, some of the constraints and challenges that this, uh, these folks are facing. Schedule activities in a way that allows your crew to uh, have the right space and the time to finish their job. A quick example could be if you have two crews comes together at the same time and they have to one have to work let's say on an upper platform and the other one has to work on a lower platform it may not be both from in terms of safety as well as in terms of material movement as well as installation perspective may not be uh, fun easy as well as uh, cost effective because you will have lots of productivity issues. So try to stagger your crew so that the crew has enough space uh, so that they can complete their job um, accordingly. Cable pulling through someone else's area. So if you have to pull cables through someone else's area, make sure that the other party understands your scope very well. The other thing that you have to make sure is that the other party understand, not only understands um, your scope that you have to pull cable, they also do not have blocked or uh, picked up that same area on their cable or something else that they need to construct. Again, it goes back to the design phase. If your design phase interface agreements were made correctly and the design phase was done right, you will have a more, um, a much easier job in theory, but in reality, more often than not, you will notice that that was never discussed during design phase. That was never established during design phase and both parties comes together during construction and may end up in the same location that, oh, I wanted that location while it's pulling my cable. And you have a conflict. Again, the purpose of us is to bring those parties together. Maybe you can both use the same location for, uh, for cable pulling. And maybe there is an opportunity because now you can share the cost of excavation, install pulling the cable and what have you. So transform challenges into opportunity. The third thing that you should be focused on is piping hydro test. If you are hydro testing, make sure that you establish a protocol. Usually one rule of thumb could be if you are the last one finishing piping installation, you are responsible to do hydro testing even if it crosses your battery limit from a physical geographic point of view. The fourth thing is heavy lifts. Cranes and lifting is never fun. Cranes and lifting can, uh, uh, can be complicated, especially if you are in a brownfield operating environment. Even if you are not a brownfield operating environment, if, uh, if you are in a heavy construction zone, there could be others who are also planning heavy lifts, cranes and lifting uh, near you. You have to make sure that you have established those communication channels and you are uh, working those uh, on a regular basis to understand if there's any other heavy lift that will be going on uh, when your uh, heavy lift will, will, be, will be done so that you are not doing heavy lifts almost at the same location 
at the same time because that can cause both parties delay, uh, can be frustrating and it can cost you real dollars. The other thing that you may want to take uh, take uh, uh, specific attention to is uh, road uh, closures and more transportation. Now, um, I'm not talking about transportation uh, as outside of your project uh, or company boundary. Let's assume that you have roads, roadways within your plant and uh, because it's a construction zone, more, more often than not, in today's environment, what we do, we fabricate things in a shop environment and then transport it in our site to minimize cost and installation activity at site because site is always more costly than doing it in a shop. So when you bring that in, a, in, a, on, in your site, you have to make sure that the, the module that you're bringing in, let's say it's oversized. Uh, you need to ensure that the roadways are open, the window is known, that no one else, party B or some other party is not necessarily um, planning to uh, transport their own modules at that same time. Because if that is the case, then none of you will be happier. <laughs> so important thing is uh, to coordinate that and establish those interfaces early to understand the exact uh, window of transportation. Water management, uh, it's super critical. Uh, depending on the location of your uh, project uh, and seasonality, seasonality considerations, you should and you must uh, ensure that you have a good water management plan from a construction execution point of view. Oftentimes you will notice that your construction water, if there's a heavy rain, you have to channel it to somewhere and you may need to dispose of it outside of site. Uh, operations may not want to, even if you have operations side by side, the operations may not want to take your water inside their facility because number one, it can contain contaminants that they don't want to deal with. Uh, maybe you have excavations and um, it, may, it may overwhelm their systems and facilities. So you have to establish your water management philosophy, plan and, uh, and, and the and the tools that you will need in order to safely uh, and uh, successfully complete your job. Last but not least, uh, during construction, you have to ensure that you know if there is any other project that is happening in your vicinity, in your area or in your plant. It's important that you talk with those guys on a regular basis. It's important that if there is any opportunity to transfer some of the assets, the construction assets, temporary construction assets from your project to the next, that is maybe not necessarily there now, but will be there maybe a week, uh, a month, or maybe a few months down the road once your project is done. Let's give, let me give you an example. Let's say you have a project that you are completing right now and in you installed scaffold obviously scaffold is expensive things so you stop you install a scaffold but before you demolish those scaffold which is also going to cost you money you find out that there's a project that's coming up in two months time frame and uh, so you can establish interest agreement to transfer the rent if it's rented rental cost from your project to the next project and also you can now uh, feel good about the fact that you also saved money because you are not demolishing and that money can go back to your company's budget or coffer or you can also use that fund if possible for paying off something that uh, that you need to that uh, uh, for your project so always look for those opportunities those opportunities do exist and uh, and because as i said during design phase engineering design unfortunately interfaces are not managed in the in the most efficient way uh, are not thought through enough um, and we end up with lots of interesting issues and problems. But uh, that's, uh, that's the construction phase interface management. In the next segment, we will talk about how to manage interface during operations with operations in case your project is in an operating environment. Hope to see you there.